The Unshackled Waves, episode 21. Shackled Waves podcast. I'm Tim Wilms, back for another interview show for this week. Our guest for today is Dan Evans, who is an Australian patriot activist who has been active in the, the patriot movement for many years, both online and on the ground. He runs the Australian Conservative Capitalist Facebook page, which shares both news and memes about the, the state of Australian society and culture. He also does live streams on his personal Facebook page, interviewing other like-minded people and also does uh, reports from various Patriot events in Australia. And he's also been nominated for the Unshackles Patriot of the Year Award. So it's a very warm welcome to you, Dan. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Uh, Happy New Year to you. Yep. Uh, so I guess we'll we'll start from the beginning. We've introduced you as a Patriot activist. So tell us a bit about uh, what that involves and uh, what your activism is about. Ah, well, I guess, yeah, I started, I only started up a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, just when the first Reclaim rallies started up, um, I got involved in that. I just felt a... Um, a need for our future and for my kids and just seeing seeing our culture changing and eroding in a way. Um, the things I do, uh, I guess, is, you know, I'm involved I'm involved in, obviously, the social media is a, it's a big side of it. Um, that's how I found out about it all. And um, so the Patriot events, you know, we've got the rallies that happen. There's, there has, it has changed a bit before, uh, recently. I think since the rallies, there was always a Reclaim rallies and everyone just wanted a new rally. Um, there still seems to be groups that do that. But, you know, there's a lot of other things happening now. So, you know, I've been getting involved in, um, I think there was an anti-Halau uh, week they had or Halau Awareness Week, which was a one-year anniversary since the Senate inquiry. And... We went down to supermarkets and handed out flyers, um, things like that. Uh, I suppose writing to ministers, just finding out about all other things and just, just working with a lot of people, um, going and meeting meeting a lot of patriots. I, I think I do quite a lot of travelling, you know, if, um, within this, trying to actually meet meet the people, meet the patriots, because um, it all started off just being a Facebook thing and, you know, that's great, it got us connected, but I want to actually see these people, I want to talk to them and know them. Yeah, so I think that's <laughs> it's a bit on that. And uh, what else you got? <laughs> uh, you're you're based in Canberra, aren't you? So that's uh, that, that'd be quite an interesting uh, place to live, being a patriot. Yeah, well, it, it has helped recently. Um, I suppose uh, being in Canberra is the national capital. Um, as it's been, we've been to all the uh, One Nation Senators uh, inaugural speeches, uh, fir- first speeches in Parliament. Um, that's been great and, you know, got to hang out with them a bit in, in the back. I've, actually, this evening I'll be going to dinner with a federal MP. I won't be saying who that is because he might not <laughs> might not want it out there. Um, yeah, so it's, it is handy being here. You know, I've worked with a lot of other groups around the nation, you know, up in Queensland especially. There's a great group working up there that put a lot of time into this. And, um, you know, I try and represent us in Canberra. You know, we seem to be a very small group because, you know, uh, Canberra's got, you know, I think it's six higher education uh, facilities, you know, for a population of 300,000, you know, so this Marxist push in our education system is, yeah, it's us pretty hard here. Not as hard as Melbourne, I don't think, <laughs> but yeah, it's... Oh, uh, yeah, I'm based down in Melbourne. Well, luckily I'm in a in a good part of Melbourne, so I stay, I'm away from a lot of the craziness that goes on in the, in the, in the main city. Yeah. Yeah, I was down there just a, sorry, I was down there just a few weeks ago um, down near Frankston. Um, I'd seen a mate his sort of move from Canberra down to there and um, I forgot what he called it, he said. Uh, Frank, Frank, 
Frankston, Frankstanistan, <laughs> you know, as if to say like Frankston cross Afghanistan, you know, because that's what it's like there now. So. <laughs> now, your Facebook page is called the Australian Conservative Capitalist. Uh, so why did you call it that and how would you describe your political philosophy? Um, yeah, why? I remember when I started it up and I think just everything that we'd I'd been doing in the Patriot Movement, I just felt that that's what I was. I was a conservative. Um, I've always had like capitalist sort of values, um, you know, uh, so, but not, not as the full mainstream. That's why it's a conservative capitalist <laughs> in a way. <laughs> so that's sort of what it's meant to say. It's, you know, I'm not a full extreme capitalist. I'm a conservative one. Um, but also have conservative values and I believe in, yeah, the capitalism, not so much a free market, but um, free market within our own nations, you know, free freedom to work hard, make make plenty of money if you want, you know, things like that. So that, that, that's the uh, main reason for naming it that. Um, that's just what it is. And I suppose uh, the other question there was describing political philosophy of that. Um, I suppose that is it. It's a conservative, but I think I don't know whether it fits in. But um, you know, there's probably a bit of nationalism in there. <laughs> so you know, really looking at looking after Australia first. I think um, yeah, I think that that is a big thing that we've lost, and especially with Trump, that's he's bringing nationalism back over in America, and that's something that a lot of Australians are looking for now. You know, we we can't we would love to help the whole world out. But you, you can't help others if you can't help yourself. So that's my philosophy on that. Yeah. So what do you sort of think is the sort of proper role of, of government? Uh, proper. <laughs> what do you mean by this? Proper role of government? Well, all right, I, I suppose the proper role of government is um, oh, well, it's making it so we don't have anarchy for one thing. You know, do, we are we. They are meant to be here to put in a bit of order. We vote them in to represent us. They're meant to be representative. You know, right now they seem to believe they're a part of this social elite and above us. You know, um, and can go and do what they want. Uh, that, that's how that's how it seems to be now. We remember the French Revolution. I think that's how things were getting there before <laughs> everyone jumped up and down and changed that. Yeah, just, you know, being my, managing, not micromanaging like they seem to be. You know, there, there is too much government right now. And, you know, if we've got laws in place, um, everything's working fine. We don't need to change that. What it seems to be is that they go in there and they go, we need to debate something. We need something. We've got to change law. Like, what the hell? You know, like our tax system started off, I think, with, I think it was under 500 pages. And now it's up to over 20,000 pages. You know, that, that, that's just nuts, you know, so complicated now. And the amount of laws, you know, you, you put on, we're just constantly building and putting on new laws, new legislation, you know, building a nanny state, you know, the government should be there to provide services, take in a bit of the tax and uh, provide the services such as police, a fire, build some roads um, and, you know, hospitals, uh, you know, I believe that's one thing that I do believe that, you know, we should have free health. Um, I don't think that should be privatised at all, anything to do with that. You know, you can't, you can't have that. I, I just think that's totally wrong. And that's, that's why I'm a conservative capitalist. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, you, so you sort of think that, yeah. Uh, from from what you're telling me, you sort of think government. You know, there are uh, you know cer certain functions of of government. The free market sort of can't can't be left uh, to do everything. Um. Oh, yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, no, I, I think they do stick their bib in a bit too much right now. I haven't really thought about that too much in, in that aspect, but um, yeah, they, well, I suppose in being a nationalist, uh, um, regulating an industry would be sort of part of that, or at least taxing imports, um, ensuring, you know, like, like well, in one way that I see that it would help is instead of, you know, going and 
when a government's got a contract instead of giving this contract to some overseas nation, you know, like just for now, build, building these trams and trains that are going on. A lot of overseas companies have gotten that. These uh, boats or submarines, you know, an Adelaide company wanted that. But, you know, we're throwing our wealth away to all these overseas nations. I think if a government is going to be building stuff, it has to be built by Australians. That's it. End of story. And I think we won't need to worry about regulating anything else because we'll have we'll be doing right up just from doing that. Yeah, that's so certainly definitely like a country first. Our government, you know, if it is going to look after people, it should be Australians. Yeah, yeah, that's my theory anyway, and I'm sure it's a lot of patriots, and that's where the patriot movement's heading anyway. So just pushing that, everyone's. That's what you patriot, patriotism towards your nation, our nation, our great nation of Australia, you know, and I've talked to a lot of these um, left wing idiots and, you know, there's a couple who said, oh, you know, you've got to have history, you know, to have culture. I said, Australia hasn't got no history. You know, that just made me sick to hear that. You know, we've been through two world wars. We've built comradeship in that. We, we had a massive influx of migration after World War Two with lots of different people coming here, but they came and they worked hard. All of this stuff has changed us and formed who we are. You know, I think we're at our peak of culture in the 80s. You know, we, we loved it. I remember the America's Cup, or the winners of the America's Cup. You know, we had the best everything. And now, <laughs> now where are we heading, you know? I, mean, I think during our era, we were placed six as the wealthiest nation in the world. Now, we're, I think we're just around 20th. You know, what's happened there? Yes. A lot of pride in ourselves and our nation and the globalist elite have come in and it doesn't matter about these wealth of nations because they're a part of all the nations and they'll they'll take their money from wherever it's good uh, so, uh, certainly uh, economically uh, we've seen the decline of Australia over the past decade which is which is quite concerning now let, uh, let's turn to uh, the issues that are uh, of concern to patriots uh, at the moment and obviously the big one is the the spread of Islam in this country so sort of why do you think that this is uh, the biggest threat facing us at the moment well so that's one thing I, I don't think it is the biggest threat I think it is it is a big threat and there is a big threat globally for um, uh, the Islamic extremism, I suppose you could put it. I think the biggest threat is the left wing who have allowed the Islamic extremism to evolve into what it is today. You know, if it, if it wasn't for the left, we would be, you know, having our thumb put down on top of them and we would be able to keep them in place, just as Russia seems to do. You know, they have millions of Muslims there. Yet they're told, no, 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 you, you, you can't go being crazy or we'll, you know, we'll knock down your mosque, we'll do this, we'll do that. You know, we've just gone through where we've had um, several schools um, being found to, I don't know what they were doing, for using government money fraudulently or making profit when they shouldn't have been and taking that money when they've been given government money to run these schools. Uh, you know, they've taken it to court and yet these schools, some of these schools have remained open and not had to pay back any money, you know, because they're like, oh, we don't want to upset anyone or hurt anyone. Now, this is just crazy. If this happened, you know, say like in Russia or some other country like that, they'll be like, nah, see you later. And I believe the same happens in China. I know, I think it's in the province of Xinjiang. Um, they had the Sharia police started rising up, you know, and enforcing Ramadan on the shops and things like that. Well, the Chinese shut it down. They said, you know, you can't have your Ramadan. You can't celebrate that here. Whereas if you go to Hong Kong, they can do whatever they want there because they're not going to the extremist level. You know, uh, I believe in freedom of religion. Um, you know, just like some of the crazy ones go, go and follow Scientology or Islam, you know. Uh, a lot of people say, you know, even like with Christianity, they just said, well, it's one, um, one, one belief over another. You know, they they don't believe it. We know there's a lot of atheism in, in Australia. Um, you know, I, I'm a Christian and I believe in God and I believe in all that, but I'm also understand how other people think. And you know, uh, religion shouldn't be in a politics for one thing. They they should be there to run. And help the economy, run services. And that's it. And keep. And you know, religion shouldn't really be a part of it. We should all just be equal. 
and that's it. Uh, yeah, so you definitely think that Islam itself is not a threat, just uh, what uh, the extreme element of it and what the, the left has sort of enabled and made excuses for. Well, you said it's the greatest threat. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't think find that it is the greatest threat. I think it is a great threat. Yes, I, I do think it is a great threat to our nation. Yes. Uh, so you've um, obviously talked about sort of the the left, as you put it. Um, you know what uh, their agenda is is also uh, threatening Australia. What sort of like how would you define the left's agenda? I mean. Uh, uh, how how is that a uh, a danger to us? No, oh, in one word, I could say it's totalitarian. They, which finds a, its way well with Islam, which is also totalitarian, in that, uh, like I, I recall, having a radio interview um, a while back, I think it was a year or so ago, and they got on the counter the people who were already planned to counter one of my protests. And in talking, talking to this guy, he had said, um, well, why are you having a protest on the same day at the same place as me, you know, as, as these other guys? And this bloke said, well, we don't think that they have a right to be heard. Now, you know, and this, this reporter said, well, isn't that a bit hypocritical? <laughs> you know, if you're taking away their freedom of speech. And it's like they, they believe, yes, they believe in freedom of speech as long as it's the same as theirs. So you can have freedom of speech as long as it's the same as theirs. You know, that, that's just crazy. They're, they're totalitarian in, in all their views out there, as we see now with this push for safe schools, this push with the, um, the gay marriage agenda. Um, you know, I, I've got no problem with, as I said, civil unions and private partnership contracts. And all I see that's happening with that now is you, you just want the word now. That's all it is. You know, we've already had several, you know, they're saying, nah, just put it through Parliament. Well, it's already been through Parliament several times, you know, and that's the thing with the left. You know, you, you, they don't accept no. Everything that comes up, they'll just keep pushing and throwing over and throwing over. No, nah, you, you haven't discussed it. It's like discuss this in Parliament. Yes, it has been discussed. It will resolve in the no, leave it. No, another year or so later, they bring it up again. You know, just like this carbon tax, you know, we got that and it was brought in. We threw it out. Obviously, the majority of Australians don't want it, except this minority keep pushing their agenda. And the thing is, they're the loud ones. They get out there and they have a big carry on. And the rest of the people, you know, we're happy we just live in our lives. We've got an opinion and it's called we're called the silent majority. And we make our voice heard at, at um, election time. But that's the thing. That, that's about the only other time. And it seems that these politicians seem to take on the squeaky wheels that keep carrying on during the year, during the year in between uh, elections and listen to them when they're not speaking for the majority of Australians. That's crazy. I'm over it. Yeah, I definitely think uh, free speech is under threat in this country. And uh, I've sort of come to sort of uh, see that the left that they think that anyone who's opposed to them is, you know, it's not just, they're, they don't just disagree with them, they're evil, and that's why it's justified to, to, to shut them down. I mean, that's, that's why they think that, you know, it's okay to go and disrupt, uh, disrupt people, people's events because they view their opponents as, as evil. Absolutely, yeah, that, that's a good, good way of putting it, absolutely. Uh, and do you also think uh, that uh, mainstream media is contributing to sort of this uh, uh, silencing of ordinary people? I mean, obviously, they, they push uh, political correctness uh, qu quite a bit. You know, if, if, somebody, if somebody says, a uh, public figure says something, you know, that they don't like, there's this, you know, huge campaign to, to shame them and make them apologise, do you think that uh, that's also a problem too? Well, it's been quite obvious and evident, um, <laughs> like uh, not just in Australia, like I think in the, the main, most thing that we've seen here most recently was in the Trump campaign, where I think it was Hillary had over near 500 um, endorsements or uh, media endorsements, whereas Trump was lucky, I think he had 26 media endorsements over the whole campaign. We see the same here, I think... Um, Oh, there's another one who's been nominated for Patriot of the Year there, Sonia, Sonia Kruger. You know, she came out and spoke out there. Um, 
And yeah, it's like they wanted to tie to the stake just for having an opinion and had to do a big statement and retraction and, you know, explain herself a bit more why she said this, you know, when it's just obvious and everyone knows it's obvious except, <laughs> and it's obvious that they're trying to hide it and, and, and push it from us. I think it's just the same as what's happened um, recently here in Canberra at the Australian uh, Christian Lobby uh, group where there was a bloke who tried to blow up the place and set off some um, LPG cylinders. Um, they're saying, yeah, he walked from there <clears throat> about three or four kilometres to the hospital. And it's like, how the hell did he do that when he was in that bad of a condition at hospital that he had to be flown to Sydney Hospital? You know, not even Canberra could look after him. Um, there's someone else involved. They're not telling us who he is, what the name was. They wouldn't even say a name, you know, like at least you could say, ah, <laughs> is it a left wing bigot who's against the uh, Christianity and all that or and Islam, you know, we know there's terrorism and I see that Islam and the left, uh, they, they both, they're both terrorist organization. Antifa is a terrorist organization. Hezbollah is a, is a terrorist organization. They're banned in many countries, yet we seem to allow these terrorist organizations to operate here amongst us. It's just it's madness. And yeah, the media, well, we obviously see with the ABC, um, <laughs> you know, that's the worst culprit for it. I think uh, I was at oh, the Brian, Brian Burston's um, first speech where the greatest, greatest part I remember of that was uh, he called for a Patriot, Patriot TV station. He said the ABC had yes. been overrun by left wings. And I was sitting in there and I was like, yeah, <laughs> a few of us. He, he got a bit of a clap, so you know you're not you're not meant to make noise and all that in there, but he, yeah, he got a bit of a <laughs> clap until we thought, oh shit, we better shut up. But um, yeah, you know, and <laughs> it, it's out there, and uh, I love what's going on. With, it's, it's being pushed, it's being opened up. This fake news stuff is we see with the mainstream media. All right, it's not fake news, but I call it. Uh, I think you would put it. They're not lying, but they're lying by omission. So. They're telling a story, but they're not giving us the full details. They're hiding certain parts of it. And they're going, well, we're not lying. We're telling the truth, but we're just not telling that part of it. And that, that's lying by omission. So it's fake news. Mainstream media is fake news, and they're lying to us. Uh, often uh, often uh, these days, or well, we're lucky that we have the internet where a lot of uh, independent uh, citizen journalists are able to you know, expose a lot of the lies that the... The, ma the mainstream media uh, perpetrate. Uh, now, I wanted to discuss um, yeah, some of your a activism. There's been a few uh, incidents that have occurred. Um, uh, one uh, last January was outside the, a Newtown Annika's bookshop where uh, you were stabbed. Uh, now, how did that confrontation occur and sort of what effect has it had on you? Okay, hang on. Yeah, um, well, how did it occur? So I was, I was up in Sydney for that weekend. So I am from Canberra and I was up there in Sydney to pick up my uh, cousin who was arriving from overseas to meet him at uh, Sydney Airport. His flight was arriving at 6.30 in the morning. So I thought rather than leaving Canberra at, you know, what, 3, 4 in the morning to get to the airport, I'll stay overnight. I know people up there, I can catch up with them. We had only just arrived at the... Um, at the hotel, we were staying at in Newtown. I think it's called the Urban. Um, when we pulled up there, I noticed, you know, there, there was pictures um, or, or spray paint, spray painting everywhere and um, like stencil spray paint. So they've got a stencil made up. It was an uh, Antifa sign and the Socialist Alliance. And it's, I, I started doing some video of that and taking photos of it. And I've seen it as it's like a dog pissing on the wall. You know, this is my territory. And that's, that's what they were doing there. Um, well, I was meeting up with Ralph Saramanara at that point. He was taking us out for dinner as he just lives nearby. And he, when he had arrived, he had seen I was doing the video. And I said, oh, Jesus, you know, look, what's this place? You know, it's full of, it's got all this spray paint, you know, the left wing um, propaganda all, all posters everywhere and spray painting and, and that. And he said, oh, this is Newtown. This is full left-wing territory and I'm like oh Jesus oh, and 
he started to describe the area to me and pointed out um, Sergio's uh, old house and workshop where he had painted, uh, he's an artist, and he had painted on the um, side of his building a uh, band the Burka sign and had the, a picture with the Burka, a lady with the Burka, took up the whole side of the building. And he was forced to leave the area, so he pointed out that, and then he pointed up the road and said, oh, here's, this is some anarchist bookshop, this is where they hang out a lot, some anarchist bookshop. And I'm like, oh, yeah, let's have a look, you know, I've been doing some videos, we'll go do a video. So we walked up there and video in hand to have a bit of a sightsee, and um, we approached the joint. This, this is all on, um, I think it is out on Facebook, this video, if anyone wants to go and see, I think it's on... Uh, Neil Erickson's page. Yeah, I'll provide a, a link to to the video in the in the sh uh, podcast episode description. Yeah. So yeah, either way, while we're there, I, I I've had not really much confrontation or anything with the left before that. I did have at the first re reclaim rally in Canberra where they were jumping up and down and just carrying on like monkeys, and I'm like, oh well, you know, that's what they do. Um, although the second rally we had, they did get a bit aggressive, but there was a busload from Sydney and a busload from Melbourne came to disrupt our rally. So we were very much outnumbered there, and um, I was spat on at that stage, but never seen any violence, you know, like actual anyone being hit or struck. Um, just They just get right in your face, you know, and like I said, I got spat at until this instance where I was up there and I had no thought of this, and... You know, I don't know, Ralph was talking to them and then they've turned to me and they, I guess they've recognised me from some of my Facebook pages and videos and they've just said, oh, you're Dan Evans. And I've stuck my hand out and said, how are you going? You know, <laughs> like, I was still was still videoing and I was just going, oh, look, look how much of a shit all this is. Like, just rubbish everywhere. Just, it looked like a dump. It looked like the, a dump. <laughs> anyway, they run inside and come out and, yeah, just hooked in. Hooked in, now three of them, so... First had a fluoro fluorescent tube, so the left thought it was funny. They've made a few memes out there where um, <laughs> and they called it fluoro wars, so, <laughs> whereas they put my face on um, Obi Wan's and got Darth Vader there and you know <laughs> waving the stick around. Um, but yeah, it was it was just straight away. It was just instant. I'm like, what the hell's going on? And it, it wasn't no warning like that's it back off get away it was just bang straight into it just belts to the head steel pole golf club um yeah and it was pretty full on i i wouldn't even know what hit where i was hit with what and where um we just found the one in my back after the police had arrived and Seen there was blood coming out of my back and took my shirt off, which there's a video of that as well, and shows a big gash in my back. Um, I don't know whether it was a fluoro tube they used for that, or I don't know, a golf club with a nail, or it could have been, I don't, you know, it wasn't stabbed in, it was more of a, a slice, but yeah. So their, their actual court case, I think, will be, um, it was a few months back, but uh, when over the two days I had set out for the trial, and they put it forward to, I think it's next week, so, or this week. No, yeah, next week will be their, their trial and where um, judgment will be passed. So, um, the funny thing before this, it's on full video, and yet the police charged me with a fray and Ralph, um, <laughs> which, of course, when I went to court, and full video evidence of everything, not just from my phone, but... From the service station and other other CCTV, which showed you know we, we did not aggravate anything. Um, the judge said at the end of it, which I felt was a fr win for our freedom of speech. She said, "You're free to walk up and down a pavement." She said, "You might be um, opposite political ideologies, but you know you're free to go and talk to someone about that. You're free to do this and that. You're free to go and film." Um, and what they done is just barbaric. So yeah, there was it was great hand down from the judge with um with us, and she threw that out. Um, so now we're waiting to see what happens with the Antifa people. But yeah, I believe not much will probably happen to them. There's usual things as Australia, and you just get a slap on the wrist. Don't do that again. Maybe a good behaviour bond. Who knows? I hope you know they do 
something does come out of that because it was a pretty savage attack anyway. Yeah. Um, the other question there is how has it affected me? Um, not long after this, <clears throat> I, um, I, I had my older son. He was uh, from uh, my first marriage. He was living with me. Um, and not long after this event, he, I guess, um, how it's come about, they said that he's he was scared that these people would come again and get him, I suppose, as well as, as me. And, yeah, since then, he's, um, he's moved in with, well, not with his mother, but um, uh, ex-father-in-law. Um, yeah, just because of the fear, fear of these terrorists have put into him, um, you know, and that, that sucks, you know. I had, he was with me full time and um, because of this fear um, that of what happened, he, he's too scared to come and live with me now. But, yeah, that's that's something real harsh that's come out of that. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, because I've, and it's also like the, the left, they say they're, uh, you know, all about, you know, love and tolerance, but, you know, this is the way that, you know, they they behave when, you know, there's no, or uh, at a lot of these rallies, the, the police often uh, hold them back, but here, but here, like, what happened to you? That's what, that, that's an example of what the left, you know, would like to do if there was, if there was no restriction on them. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's they'll just use violence to get their way. Another funny example, not to change the subject too much, but as you were saying at rallies, um, we held not too long ago. I think it was while I was running for the um, I was running for the candidacy uh, for an MLA in Canberra, and um, I went and spoke at a anti-safe schools rally, um, and we were counted. And these people, just the same, usual left in our face, screaming, yelling, bullying. And we're like, um, you hypocrites. You're, you're, you say you're standing up for an anti-bullying program, yet you're coming here and you're bullying us. This is a hypocrisy of the left. It is, it's, it's unimaginable, it's unfathomable, that just what they do, you know, the hypocrisy of it. That there they are using bullying tactics to support a so-called anti-bullying program. There's nothing anti-bullying about it. You know, you could put it across a board, but this is all just a an agenda, a push for their own agenda to get this sick, depraved, you know, 30 or 40 different sexual orientations out there. You know, um, I, I, I consider myself a wealthy millionaire and I think the government should support that and, <laughs> and send me money. <laughs> you know, why not? I, I, I could be a dolphin if I wanted. Isn't that something? Like... Jesus, you know, it's it's mental instability. Uh, sorry, Tim. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I've 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 definitely heard some some classics about uh, the the different different things that people identify as. Yeah, the 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 millionaire ones are a good one. Now, um, I, I want to talk about another um, uh, incident that happened. You were you were asked to leave the the Sydney Opera House where. Where you held a, a rally there with the uh, Australian flag. Now, what exactly happened there? Okay, Tim. So yeah, it wasn't a rally at all. So I was just in Sydney. I, I, I travel to Sydney quite a bit, and, um, and I hang out with a lot of patriots there. Same as you know, down in Melbourne and uh, Sunshine Coast. It's a bit hard to get over to South Australia and Perth, but or the other states. But um, East Coast, I try and hang out with a lot of people and. Um, I was there with uh, George George Jameson and um, John Bolton. Um, also, he's a great patriot mover and he's um, spoken at many reclaim rallies and he has represented me as a as for anything legal I need as well. Um, and we just thought, hey, okay, we love our flags and we thought we'll, we'll get some shots with, you know, holding the two flags we had the Australian red ensign and the national flag the new blue national flag and um, we just wanted some shots with the harbour bridge in the background and opera house and so we started doing that um, we, we did have uh, the first we had a security guard come up just 
Hey, what is doing? Oh, yeah, no worries. Walked away. We had a couple of police come up. Hey, guys, you know, what's going on? Oh, yeah, no worries. All good. Just talking to us. Yeah, we're just doing some photos with the flags. Oh, yeah, cool. No worries. They took off. Um, and then not long after that, uh, another security had come, and this is where there is a video of that also on Facebook there. Um, it's on my conser uh, conservative capitalist page, Australian conservative capitalist. If you look through the videos there. Um, that has been viewed quite a few times. I think it's up to about 300,000 or more. Um, but, yeah, we were told to leave. Uh, we couldn't have, have our flags up. Um, when I'd asked why, they said that um, it's because of discrimination. And I'm like, what? <laughs> they said discrimination against... So pretty much it's discrimination against someone from another nation who wants to wave their flag around. Although in the Constitution it states that uh, any citizen can carry, carry or raise a flag in all of Australia's states and territories, you know, um, but not, not any other nation's flags, you know, where we can have the red ends on, the national flag or the Union Jack, so the British flag. So we can, we can carry any one of those three flags as part of our Constitution. Yet the, the second security guard who came, who was quite aggressive towards us, um, he even wanted to fight us. And there is, there, I only caught a snippet of that before my battery ran out. But you can see him being held back by one of the big Tongan security guards as he's trying to have a go at us. <laughs> like he went that crazy. Um, and yeah, you know, they, they've just said that it's, it's discrimination against other nations. Um, and there was a bylaw. So it's a New South Wales bylaw that um, has passed this. So it's Mike Baird, you're an Australian. We, you know, we just proved, Mike, well, you know, it's pretty easy to see that. Mike Baird, you're an Australian. Um, with these laws that have been passed there, he's a very, you know, he's meant to be liberal, but liberal party, but he's very left-wing, as we've seen, you know, pushing to all the left-wing agenda, as he did with the Greyhound racing and uh, many other things. And this is just one of the other laws that have come up that no one knew about. No one ever knew about this. They passed these laws without us knowing. And I think it's in Mein Kemp where Hitler had said, the best way to take a person's freedom away is a little bit at a time. And let me tell you, Australia, this is what's happening to us. They are taking our freedom away a little bit at a time. And it's going to be too late by the time you realise that you need to do something now. Yeah, it's, it's certainly from, yeah, from yeah, what, uh, what you've told me that, you know, the security people, they, they saw you with the flag and uh, they, they just thought, you know, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a bad thing. Oh, you know, we can't have that. I mean, that, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, well, it's strange because we had security, one lot of security come up to us to start with. We had the police come up to us. And it seemed to be just this one head security guy who had sent down another security to tell us to put them away. And, um, you know, which is a law. So we do everything within the law, unlike the, the left who will do whatever the hell they want um, and break the law and think, oh, but it's okay that I'm breaking the law because it's part of my freedom of speech, you know, to break the law. No, it's not. You know, uh, it's nuts. So, you know, I don't know. All these other security didn't have a problem when we're walking out. I talked to some others and they're like, oh, no, all good. Yeah, good on you, Aussie. But this bloke, he, he had some issue with us. So I'm not sure what happened. But we did go the next day because um, we thought, stuff you. <laughs> we got a few people together. But uh, as it seems, everyone wrote to me on Sunday going, oh, where is it? Where are we going? I'm like, oh, it was yesterday. So if you're going to organize something on Facebook, you need at least two days because for the post to filter through. <laughs> a lot of people didn't even see it till after the fact of the event when I said, everyone get down and bring your flags down to Parliament House. And a lot of people didn't see it till the next day. So we did get a few people down there. We pulled our flags out and not one person came up to us. So I think they, after seeing it on Facebook, because apparently the brother of this main security guard was on there having a good carry on to us. Um, I think they thought best leave us alone. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
uh, it's it's yeah, it's quite sinister how how sometimes these these things occur. Now, um, some of your fellow activists are not afraid to confront um, le uh, leftists and Marxists out on out on the streets. We've mentioned uh, Antifa. Uh, already, which is a left-wing group, which often uh, causes trouble at these events. Uh, uh, do you think that um, it's important to to confront these groups, uh, sort of, you know, question them? Well, you know, I, I think it, I think it is important to um, yes, to to question them and confront them in a way that um, I feel that I go and confront them now. I used to leave them alone and leave their events alone because. Hey, that's your thing. You go have your rally, have your freedom of speech. But they will not give me the same courtesy. So I have gone. Um, you know, they, they don't let us have ours. So I'll confront them at theirs and do the same back. And, you know, I know it's a bit of a tit for tat, but it seems to be the only thing that works with children like them. So they're very child minded and um, they don't think too much about anything. And I, I don't know what else to do. Um, that's it. You know, it's, it's just hard to think, what, what can you do to them? What can you do to, to open their eyes, to make them see? They, they ignore everything else. Um, they're complete bigots, they're absolute bigots when it comes, comes to discussing anything. It's their agenda, their way, that's it. Uh, um, I guess the reason I ask this question is because some people would say that, you know, you've sort of, uh, you know, got to take the moral high ground and even if they come to, to disrupt your events, you should sort of, like, you know, be the, you know, uh, be sort of, you know, take the moral high ground and sort of, you know, not, uh, not go down to, to, the, to their level. Like, what would you say to sort of that point of view? Well, yeah, you know, th this is all right. This comes down... I suppose why we have all different there are different patriot groups and that now you know um you, you you can't tell everyone to be a certain way um this may cover some other questions later too but uh you can't tell everyone to be a certain way there are going to be some people that want to confront them there are, there are a few groups now that that's their main focus is just you know they don't care they're going to stand up they're going to confront them um others yeah I, I agree the same I, I don't i don't really believe in rallying that much now i think we've we've gone past that um i will I, I will attend some rallies but i think there are other things we need to do now to try and push through as we see you know especially with the greens you know they're infiltrating everything now you know they're they're right down into the councils, up into the government, they see what needs to be done. We need to do the same thing. We need to get into all forms of government, not just worry about this high level. We need to get all over it to be able to be heard and, and get ourselves in there. Um, in, in fighting back, um, yeah, I think you should take the moral high ground. We have and at every reclaim rally uh, that has been. There's always been, yeah, we just laugh at them and go, look at them, you know, it's a bit hard. It's just like watching a pack of savage dogs just yelling and screaming and just look like there's, they're foaming at the mouth. They're that crazed, 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 you know, and it's just, you wonder what's in their minds. And, you know, I know we have, I have talked to some afterwards, like, oh, I think there was a bit of a blue going on at one of the rallies and I've run down a, have a look as it was after the rally and there was one patriot girl talking to a lefty girl and she's there going why are you even here do you even know why you're here and then this girl's in there going i don't know, I don't know. <laughs> and i've i've gone what i went so you don't even know why you're here you've just come just to cause shit. you know they've come just to to stir up and cause trouble because that's what they do you know and these people most of them they have no idea they don't care they just go yeah let's we're anarchists, we're against this and against the bloody system and blah, blah, blah. When they are the system now. They've infiltrated the system. And all they are now is just, yeah, anarchist nutbags, foaming at the mouth, crazed people. Yeah, that's, uh, they do behave pretty 
um, Farrell. Um, yeah, you sort of alluded to my next question, that sort of the, the Patriot movement in Australia has gone through sort of several incarnations. I mean, there, there's been the Australian Defence League, uh, that you mentioned Reclaim Australia, and sort of the dominant group at the moment is the United Patriots Fronts. Can you sort of explain why there's sort of been these, uh, you know, constant regroupings in the movement? Mm. I, 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 th I think it's like um, anything, um, you know, powers to be over history. You know, you had your Romans, you know, your British were up there, Americans, who probably China will be the next one. <clears throat> Things are always going to change. But I think, uh, you know, three good possible reasons is that it would change is um, uh, some of these groups would be infiltrated by Nazis and, you know, white supremacists and things like this. Um, I see that happen a bit, and it's like these idiots don't understand that, you know, the Patriot, Australian Patriot movement is not like them. You know, they have a complete different ideology, and but they come and attach and try to, and, you know, think that they're part of it, and then sometimes it'll even get infiltrated by it. Um, yeah, with some of the groups you just mentioned there, where are we? So you said Australian Defence League, Reclaim Australia, um, you know, United Patriots Front. One, one big point I, I think that I'd see that Ralph Ceremonara <laughs> has been a part of all of this. He seemed the Australian Defence League went downhill as soon as Ralph jumped in and went in to take, take over there and... Uh, made himself self-appointed president of that. Um, that turned to shit. Then he attached on to many leaders of the reclaim movement and um, caused shit and division all in, in, in amongst them. Um, yeah, and then down with the, the UPF, I think, where um, Neil and Sherman were, were a part of all this. And, um, and so was old Ralphie boy. And what's happened there, you know, he just, I, I'm not sure if he's a, you know, he seems to be a great player in the movement where he's got his left wing biggest page, but it's like destruction just follows him. And it's, it's like, you must be a, an infiltrator or a paid someone just to get into these groups. Yeah. Yeah. Look like you're all for it. And then you leave a trail of destruction behind you because those three groups you just mentioned have all had, um, you know, all built up and become massive and it seems to be, you know, I think a lot of people are starting to pick up on it because I know there was a TBC down in Melbourne. He went and attached onto them at one rally they had down there in Melbourne and um, it was after this rally he's come out and said, oh yeah, I'm going to be running TBC, Sydney, this and that and so he just put himself up into this position until they've gone, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> piss off Ralph, <laughs> you know. They seen the same thing was happening, so I think his time's over, and a lot of people aren't going to put up with this bullshit anymore. And I think we might be stabilising a bit now. Um, yeah, another one is I, I think uh, Aussies, you know, a lot of them. From what I seen that happen in um, the reclaim was we don't we don't like just one boss, you know. There was one person in there in the old reclaim and the old one where know the big boss and just wanted to you know it was very much it became a dictatorship and australians don't like that yeah and some of these groups start turning out like this and you know it turns away from being a democratic group where everyone could talk and everyone finds the decisions in amongst a group rather than having this one person dictate to all of them then it can work but if, if, if you're being dictated to, a lot of the, you know, it's going to fall apart. And, um, you know, I think that, that's something that happens as well. So I, don't, I, I think it's all right. I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with um, new groups coming up. It's just, um, yeah, it's a rebranding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sort of it is a shame when sort of uh, these sort of internal uh, of co uh, conflicts happen because it, yeah, it's it's sort of you know because you've got to start again and that's sort of a setback for the movement. Um, now, one of the group uh, groups that you're currently involved is in the is the Party for Freedom. Can you tell us a bit about who they are and sort of what what they aim to achieve? 
Um, really. uh, yeah, the Party for Freedom. Yeah, I suppose I am involved with them, but only as much as um, <clears throat> other uh, any other patriot group. But I suppose it may look like that I am involved with them a lot more is because they've actually got boots on the ground. They're actually um, a group that gets out and does does stuff um, and is very active. So, you know, I work with all groups and a lot of groups. Um, you know, Nick, Nick Folks, he's a, it's a political party and um, he's formed as a political party and he's a leader of this party. And um, I don't know, they got very national views, so yeah, very nationalist. A um, little different to what, what my views are, where I'm a bit more conservative capitalist rather than the complete social, uh, what do they call it? National Socialist. Um, yeah, but the, they, they very much seem to be pushing the agendas of against um, uh, immigration or refugee immigration or any immigration. Uh, they believe in a lot of the nationalist approaches um, and I know they're against, very much against the Safe Schools program and the uh, gay marriage debate. <laughs> So sort of you sort of consider yourself as a patriot activist then sort of not aligned, but you, you, you work with, you know, gr uh, groups who are, who are, do who are doing certain, certain campaigns and activism. Yeah, absolutely. See, the, and uh, I, I've put out um, a few videos and tried to tell people a few weeks ago that I'm sick of hearing this crap about, you know, we all need to join, we all need to be united and that, um, uh, you know, look, I, I, I work with anyone and everyone. So I know George from Party for Freedom, he's the same, you know, he's with the Party for Freedom, but he works with all of them. Right now, I'm the uh, public officer of Reclaim Australia Canberra Incorporated, um, and I'm the Canberra representative for Securities and Freedom Australia. They're mainly based up on the Sunshine Coast, so that's where if anyone sees me going up there, that's why I'm going to the Sunshine Coast. Um, you know, and uh, any other group, that I can work with, I work with who has similar similar ideals, and this is this is it. We can all work together. We don't need this one big group or umbrella groups and things like that. We can we can work together um, in our own way. You know, a lot, a lot of people, like I said before, they uh, in your last question, you know, people they don't want to be bossed around. They don't want to be dictated to. So they're all going to go and have their own little groups. This is Australian. This is what Australians do. <laughs> you know, we, we, we want to do things our own way. And so I'm going to work with that. I'm not going to try and change that, but I'm going to work with that and go, right, I can still work with that. Everyone go and have your, your other groups. Um, and when it's something important, mate, it, it, we can join together. You know, there's a lot of idiots out there um, and I don't want nothing to do with them. And I'm sure there's probably a few people that, you know, only a few, you don't like me <laughs> so you know that's it if we to join together this is why i've seen it we're all meant to be in this one big happy group um but then you know like i don't like that person that person doesn't like that person it's not going to work and it's just going to continue to crumble so this may come back as a possible reason um also for your last question there about um why that we keep forming new groups um you know because if we do try and get too big and pull everyone together and then infighting starts, then it just crumbles. And I, th I think that could be a very good good reason there as well for, for your other question there. Yeah, and it sounds like you've sort of uh, adopted a good strategy, which is sort of, you know, uh, don't sort of, you know, become part of, like, commit to sort of one group, but just, you know, work with, you know, like-minded like people on, on, on various campaigns that you're passionate about. Yeah, well, there are there are the two groups that I do, you know, dedicate myself to. So as I said, but exactly, yeah, I still will work with others. You know, why not? Why the hell not? You know, they're doing something good. Why why turn someone away when they're doing something great? You know, and I'm here to make Australia great again. <laughs> Now let's turn to Australian politics. So 
There's, um, so obviously at the federal election, um, One Nation and Pauline Hanson uh, uh, made a return to uh, federal politics and they're, they're growing in, in popularity and obviously there's been uh, talk of uh, Cory Bernardi splitting from the Liberal Party to form a, a new Conservative Party. So uh, what, what would you like to see in, in the Australian political scene? Like what needs to happen for sort of, you know, more, um, uh, more, more, pa uh, more patriotic uh, uh, things to happen in government? Well, well, I see, I think, oh, sorry, George Christensen, he was on that bandwagon as well for the new Conservative Party. But um, when it comes down to it, I think our true, you know, uh, like you're saying, I've just said before about unity. Um, you know, this is where it comes back to the unity. Everyone's going, we need one party, we need one party. You know, we've got to follow just one nation. We've got to follow just this conservative group. And this comes back to me again now where I'm saying, no, let's turn away from that because let's get back to our, our grassroots, our real Australians. This is what we were back in the day. We, we didn't have our one major party, you know, when we first started. We were, we were a minor and independent parties. And our true voice in Parliament is a coalition of minor parties and independents. And I think if we get enough, we, you know, if, if Corey and uh, George break away and form a group and others get away, you know, for Labor to run government, they need the Greens behind them now. So it's just the same, you know, Liberal and Nationals. If we can have, you know, the Nationals piss off from Labor as well, we get Nationals, we get One Nation, and we get these Conservative parties out there. We could form a great Conservative coalition and actually run this country. We don't need just one party, but we can form a great coalition. And this is it. We can have our own slight different views that we attach to our, you know, we will follow that party or follow that group because that suits you best. But in the main scheme of things, we know what our main values are and we can form a coalition that runs with that. And I think that we're going to get there. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, perspective because sort of yeah, and I and I've sort of you know got got this view as well that uh, that mo most people think the the right needs to unite, but you don't see the fact that there are all these different parties as a bad thing. No, yeah, see that that's the thing, and I see it at um at the last election where Malcolm Turnbull see he's pushing it, and he does it does work to quite a degree. Like when I was running um here in Canberra that a few people said, oh, yeah, I wouldn't vote for you, but I want to make sure these people get in or that person. It's like, well, it's still, you can still vote for them. Give me your number one because I might get there, but you put them number two, they're, they're still going to get there. You know, you, you've got your preference. We can preference who we want. So you're not throwing your vote away. And this is where um, Turnbull pushed that at the last election when he's seen that there was a great threat from the minority parties. And he said, don't throw your vote away. You know, don't throw your vote away on these minorities. Vote for, you know, your major parties. And that's because he knows, you know, Labor, Liberal, they're both the same. They don't care who gets in. They're both scratching each other's backs. They're both getting massive pensions. They're both bloody getting massive pay deals and travel allowances and all that. And, you know, they're scratching each other's backs. And, you know, they're scared of a coalition to come in and keep the bastards honest. That's what it needs. That's what needs to happen in Australia again. It's been a long while since we've had someone in there to set these bastards straight and keep them honest. Yeah, well, I certainly think that, yeah, um, patriotism uh, and sort of, you know, uh, conservative values is definitely um, uh, on the on the rise again. So I certainly think that, um, yeah, as long as, uh, you know, we sort of, you know, make our voices heard, uh, we can we can certainly uh, make an impact. I'll tell you what, Tim, this year is going to be a great year. I feel 2017 is just going to be the start of it. There are several state elections that are probably coming up. You know, we have just passed through our um, federal election, but I know the patriot movement has been on a bit of a lull. Um, you know, with rallies, everyone thinks, oh, well, there weren't any rallies, so what happened? But, mate, there were still heaps going on. I know Party for Freedom, they were still hitting out on rallies. We had um, UPF, they were still out there doing lots of active, active things, um, you know, especially that, that stunt down at the football field. That was great, you know. Um, too bad they're not allowed to go there again. Was that life ban? I think they got for uh, waving their banner. Ah, oh, yes. 
banner, yeah. Um, Ban the Burka banner, wasn't it? Or uh, stop their mosques. Stop the mosque. That's what it was. Stop the mosque. But yeah. So everyone has still been moving, but I think you know we have been on a bit of a lull. Um, you know, just regrouping, and we've been finding ourselves. And I know there has been a few new groups emerge, as we said. You know. We've had these other groups. There are new groups now. So we, we do see that there have been these other ones out there. There might be some other great ones coming up too. And, hey, let's let's get into it. Night Field 2017, we're, we're just kicking off now, getting ready for the next federal election. If, if you want to run it for a federal election, it's going to take you three years. So we're starting now, and we're going to be pushing, and we're going everywhere, and we're going to be doing lots of events, lots of things. Um I don't know what's coming up next. I know, I know down in Melbourne, there's um, Melbourne and Sydney. They've got a, a rally for the inauguration of Trump. I think in Sydney, it was the left was organised a rally against it. So I think the Liberal Party actually, or some members of the Liberal Party have organised a counter demonstration for that, but they're actually not going to be anywhere near them. Um, yeah, so it's interesting for some members of the Liberal Party to actually get in on that. They're trying to look conservative, I guess. Um, the Party of Freedom has said, no, they're not hardcore enough, so I'm going to do my own right next to the other guys. So Party for Freedom will be doing one. I think that's the 21st, next, not this Saturday, the Saturday after. Um, and that's in Hyde Park in Sydney. I'm not sure where the Melbourne one is. And then, yeah, just a week after that, we've got the another big national rally we had one in february down in canberra that i helped organize um there was a lot of great other great people that helped organize um and that drew people from we had people from perth brisbane melbourne everywhere we had bus loads like a bus from south australia come up bus from melbourne bus from sydney and it was it was a uniting rally it's, it, and it shows that we can have our different groups and when it comes down to it, we can unite, and we will. You know, um, we will unite. Yeah, I definitely think that's a nice, uh, optimistic uh, note to end on. So, um, yeah, that's all we've just, got time for. So I, thanks for being a guest uh, today, Dan. Just, just one last thing, Tim. I, I just want to thank, like, I see that I've been nominated uh, Patriot of the Year, and, and that's a great honour, and I thank you guys for that. But I just want to say that, you know, you can't get there without the help of anyone else. And, you know, over the last few years, like in the beginning, I had help from uh, Craig Cartwright. Um, you know, he was a great help in the beginning and, and Robert and, um, uh, you know, and right now I've got Harry, my wife, Martine and uh, Tina, you know, they're, they're helping out now. And look, there, there is no one man, you know, you got to look at the team behind that person that's helping them. So, you know, I just want to thank all these people because you can't you can't do anything by yourself, all right? You, you need your team behind you. And I just wanted to say thanks to my team. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh. yeah. Oh, that, uh, that, that, that's very modest of you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you, if you like what you've heard today, um, uh, please vote for Dan for Patriot of the Year, and I advise all of our viewers and listeners to check out uh, his conservative uh, capitalist Facebook page. I'll provide a link to that on the show notes page, and also uh, view some of uh, Dan's live streams on his personal uh, Facebook page. And uh, Dan, we certainly wish you all the best for future activism, and I'm sure we at The Unshackled will continue to be in contact with you. Excellent. Thanks for that, Tim. You know, you guys do a great job. Thanks, Steve. Talk soon. All right. So that's the show for today. I'll be back next week for a, or another review show. Uh, and don't forget also to check out the unshackled.net for all the, the latest news. And don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio or SoundCloud. So thanks once again for listening and we'll see you next time.